The latest YA dystopia movie Ted Our Screens is Uglies. It's based on the book of the same name by Scott Westerfield, which actually came out in 2005. And if you've seen the movie or read the book, it eerily reflects our time today more than it does back then. I posted about this a few weeks ago in my community tab, and thank you so much to everybody that actually recommended that I read the book, because I gotta say I prefer the book to the movies. I said it, I said it. There's gonna be spoilers for the first book and the movie in this video, but I haven't read any of the other books, so don't worry, I won't be spoiling any of those. And actually, can I please just request that you you don't do that either in the comment section down below just for everybody's sort of like benefit I think. <laughs> if you're wanting a full breakdown of the comparison between the book and the movie and what they changed I don't do that on this channel if you want that sort of stuff I highly recommend going and checking out Dominic Noble's channel. The theme that I'm going to focus on in this video is a plastic surgery that all the quote ugliers get and how it perfectly reflects the world that we're living in right now and also it has like a bit of an uncomfortable mirror uh, to the dystopian world a few of us are sadly living inside our heads. I've spoken in the past about my body dysmorphic disorder which I refer to as BDD and the fact that I've dealt with EDs in the past and I've been on a long journey to be able to get myself out of that but uh, this movie really does tap into that exact same stuff that we are absolutely taught is just completely normal and this is why I really wanted to make this video with the way that the digital world is absolutely warping what we consider to be normal and acceptable in terms of people's looks. I'm referencing a bunch of studies in this video and there's going to be resources in the description box below if you need them because trust me I know how bad it can get. Do you remember the facial symmetry trend on TikTok? With people in genuine despair if their face didn't match one side to the other. You could use this filter, you could do the inverted filter, you could do a number of different things and you could do the classic golden ratio to just solidify if you felt ugly. <laughs> oh you really are. What if you could fix all of your flaws without having to save thousands and thousands of dollars? What if you could actually go through all of that without suffering from any pain afterwards? And what if you could look perfect without having to try and resort to all of these weird things that people on TikTok keep on telling you to do, including sleeping on your back, which if you suffer from sciatica and sleep paralysis, that's not a fun thing to try and do. <laughs> One elegant procedure that will make you perfect, both inside and out, and free from hatred and discrimination based on the way that you look. You requested it, so let's go over a brief premise of the book and the movie. In a supposed utopian future where conflicts of the past were rife, where people called rusters would use fossil fuels and they would fight each other over land and over their differences, a solution was made by scientists to level the playing field and they developed this genetically modified flower which would provide all of the power that they could possibly need. And now everybody gets surgery at the age of 16 so then everybody can be perfect inside and out and when you're perfectly happy because there's no problems with you, you're not going to want to fight each other. You're not going to want to start wars because you're happy. In the city, they've evolved past the rusters, who they learn about in school and all of their barbaric ways, like how they would chop down trees and how they would eat animals, which gets covered far more in the books. All of the kids get referred to as uglies and they stay in these brutalist architecture dormitories where they can look over to where pretty villas and the future that awaits them. The way that uglies name and call each other is by their worst feature. So for example, our protagonist Tally is called squint because she has squinty eyes. Her best friend Paris gets called nose and her new friend Shay gets called skinny but that happens in the book it doesn't really happen in the movie. Uglies pass their time by imagining how they'll be when they finally get their surgery using these AI tools to create different versions of themselves, morphos, and also by doing tricks which are basically pranks or like daredevil-esque sort of activities and Telly does this all the time. Telly desperately wants to be pretty and feels like her life can't start until she actually becomes pretty. Paris, her best friend, is three months older than her so he goes for his surgery before she does and she sneaks out one month later to go see him because in the movie he was meant to see her at the bridge but in the book she just snuck out to go see him anyway. When she finds him in Prettyville he treats her completely differently and she gets found out so has to use these bungee jackets in order to escape and the bungee jackets play a far more significant role in the book. Shay becomes Tally's close friend and Shay doesn't want to be pretty, she doesn't want the surgery. What Shay wants is to go to the smoke, this place that exists where people aren't judged by the way that they look. Shay asks Tally to go with her but Tally still desperately wants to be pretty so she says no and when she goes for her surgery the evil Dr. Cable blackmails her to go and be a spy on the smoke. Dr. Cable says the smoke is a building a weapon to destroy the city because they don't agree with their way of life and Shay is in great danger so what Tally needs to do is take this heart necklace with her which is a her tracking device and use it as soon as she gets there in order to le let them know exactly where the location is. So Tally goes and discovers wow these people are actually nice and caring they work hard they take care of each other 
other and they take care of the things that they own. But here you have to trade to be able to get anything. Nothing is free like it was in the city. This is distinguished a lot better in the book once again. In the movie, Telly confesses to Shay that the only reason she even went to the smoke to begin with was to bring Shay back. And Shay decides to keep this secret. The quote weapon that the city is so scared about is being developed by two scientists who just so happen to be the protagonist's love interest. David's parents, who everybody in the movie is absolutely in love with. Everyone loves David. He's like a legend. In the movie, they got rid of the love triangle because when they were ticking off the tropes list, they just had to make sure that she was shooty and arrow. They have that, so checklist done. David's parents used to be plastic surgeons and worked with Dr. Cable. However, when they found out that during the transformation surgery, brain lesions were being done to every single patient, they decided they couldn't stay anymore, so they escaped and they created the smoke. Telly throws her necklace off into the fire because she no longer wants to be a spy, but it turns out that was the thing which actually let the city know exactly where their location was. Dr. Cable arrives and Telly gets found out by the smoke is a full betrayal and david's father gets killed by <gasps> paris tally's best friend who's been made into a super soldier because he's decided to have empathy for tally everybody except for tally and david get captured and taken back to the city for their transformations with shay being the first one the one who never wanted to be pretty the smokies rescue shay and the gang and stop the surgeries from happening on the others due to this big distraction but shay refuses a cure which david's mother has created which can actually undo the brain lesions because she likes being this way the difference between the smokies and the city folk is that the smokies understand that you should have a choice so tally just decides to be the test subject and does this so nobly to assuage her guilt for all of the manipulation and lying that she's done over the past few months. Dramatically the movie ends showing us that Tally's gone through the prettiest surgery, but she looks down at her hand and the scar of her childhood is still there with her. Until next time in the prettiest movie. Dun dun dun. It was the plan all along. That was your TLDW. I hope that you enjoyed my dramatic reenactment. I will accept roses in the comments down below. I wish I was there so much it hurts. Until then we're less than ignored. Everyone is ugly, or at least we think we are. The entire point of the movie is that everyone is made to feel ugly until they have their plastic surgery on their 16th birthday. So if people are coming in with their, aha, gotcha moment, the actors aren't even that ugly, well, whoosh, the whole point of the movie just went right over your head. It's okay, I had the same thought when I watched the trailer, but it was when I read the book that I actually understood the entire point of it was that they're made to feel ugly. Huh, isn't that similar to how we're all made to feel ugly now? <laughs> their standards of beauty are this unrealistic AI heightened, narrow Eurocentric box of beauty, just like we feel ugly too, because we're made to. And in the book, natural pretties are so rare, they're almost referred to like a legend with only a few ever existing in the world. And that's kind of the entire point is that you have to manufacture the beauty. And in a world where beauty is all that matters, what else is there to focus on? Research confirms time and again about pretty privilege, something which I and many other people have made videos about, and it's been studied incredibly deeply. And there's actually been this latest study which confirms that people who are considered to be pretty are considered to be more trustworthy by Astrid Hopfensitz. Their recent paper shows this through an experiment they did where participants had to decide if they could trust another person in this game to win differing amounts of money based on the actions of the other. Our research confirms that those people who are considered to be more beautiful by our raters are also believed to be more trustworthy. However, when investigating actual behavior, we see that beautiful individuals are neither more nor less trustworthy than anyone else. And once again, the book addresses this far better because when people actually look at pretties, they feel this sort of sense of ease, they feel this trustworthiness, they feel this warmth, but that doesn't really get shown very well in the movie. It only gets shown in this one scene where Paris returns to see his best friend and I personally don't think that's a great example of it because it's your best friend. Unrealistic beauty standards apply to all genders as I've talked about before, especially with superhero movies over the past, what, 15 years or so, creating these unrealistic body standards in particular for men. These bodies are not achievable without making it a full-time job. Heck, Hugh Jackman put himself through absolute hell in order to look like this for the Wolverine and Deadpool movie. He's 55 years old, he shouldn't have been able to get his body to look like this, and he even says that he'll never, ever be able to do this ever again. And he gets hugely applauded for this, yet about 99% of people will never, ever be able to achieve this sort of physique. That is the blueprint for actors. Like, when we saw this, every actor wanted to mimic what he did. And he doesn't recommend doing this either, but people don't care because they're too busy drooling because that's the thing that we've been told to care about the most, is the looks. Digital dysmorphia was a term coined in 2016 in this paper by Isabel Coy Dilby, published in Nature. 
digital dysmorphia of the female body, the redisfigurement of the image, where they say, not only do we critique our bodies and mirrors, but now we can digitize our dysmorphia by virtually modifying what we dislike, creating quote, perfect selves instead. Perhaps this enablement irrevocably changes definitions of normativity as we alter our relations to the body and image. Think about how far technology has come even in the past five years, where we can alter our faces and bodies in real time. The way you can alter your body in video now with just a few quick clicks on an app is actually really worrying to me. And we're warping this into the ideal version of ourselves, which isn't actually that far from the AI enhanced version that you see in Uglies. In Uglies, you can change your image to be whatever version you like, test out different looks. In the book, Shay says how she likes the way she looks and how she appreciates everybody looking so different and how pretties actually look incredibly similar. And this makes me think a bit of the Instagram face, which I know that we all know about because everybody's made a video about it. The thing is that when you're using the same metric of beauty, you're gonna get people looking very similar. Check out how different even beautiful celebrities look when their faces are put into the golden ratio. For many years now, plastic surgeons have been getting filtered and edited photos of clients themselves as opposed to inspiration pics of celebrities. What we're able to effectively do now is like real-time surgery because you can see exactly how you would look if you change this, that, that, and the other, and also probably just got an entirely new, different layer of skin so then you can have no pores. You can see what could be you in just a few set of clicks, you know, the best version of you, which fits into this narrow set of standards. Snapchat dysmorphia was a term coined by British cosmetic surgeon Tijion Esho, and it's been known since 2018 to be an issue. For myself, I took in inspiration pictures of noses I liked from Pinterest. And that was in 2015 when I had my surgery, it's nearly a decade ago. If my warped and broken brain had access to the filter technology, to the editing technology, you can bet your bottom dollar I would have been Botox, filler, I would have been under eye filler, lip filler, I would have gotten so much done. And I will just clarify for you, I've only ever had those two surgeries done, I haven't had any Botox, any filler, and I'm honestly, I don't really want to get any of that done for me personally. I'm trying to, you know, do the whole embracing my skincare and sun cream sort of stuff as opposed to go down uh, that sort of route for me personally. In body image, the impact of beauty and self-compassion TikTok videos on young women's appearance, shame and anxiety, self-compassion mood and comparison processes by Vea Sikis and Rochelle Kennedy assesses the impact of short form content on young women's minds. The beauty hashtag on TikTok as of November 2022 exceeds 100 billion views, an early content analysis shows that beauty is the highest appearance focus category on TikTok, with beauty TikToks negatively impacting shame and anxiety, self-compassion and mood. The proliferation of beauty TikToks, which include the promotion of often risky facial aesthetic procedures, is seemingly normalizing the belief that women should constantly be considering ways in which their facial beauty is inadequate. Over time, women internalize this relentless messaging and begin to see themselves as objects to be admired, a term known as self-objectification. Zoom dysmorphia even became a thing in 2021 one back when people were taking the pandemic that we're still definitely in seriously. This is because companies increased accessibility to allow people to work from home, something which I argue should be way more normalized. It meant that people were looking at themselves on a screen more, which brought greater dissatisfaction to their self-image. Settings like the enhanced feature on TikTok and touch up my appearance on Zoom deliver flawless skin for videos. Editing apps such as Facetune, which saw usage increase by 20% at the beginning of the pandemic and has over 1 million images exported daily, allows users to smooth, shrink and sharpen their way to perfection. It's never been easier to picture your ideal face. And as social media promotes this, shall we say, heightened sense of reality? Validating each other's perfected images Sparks, what Dr. Jasmine Fardouli from the Department of Psychology at Macquarie University calls an envy spiral, creating an airbrushed online environment that's increasingly divorced from reality. As I've said before, body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, affects about 1 in 50 US citizens. And it is not a fun thing to battle at all. Professor Philippa Dietrichs, a psychologist at the Centre of Appearance Research at the University of West England, shares about Dove's self-esteem report in 2021 that 50, that's 5 zero, percent of girls believe they didn't look good enough without photo editing. This suggests that the cumulative effect of filters and digital distortion over time is creating low self-worth amongst girls and young women. You see why I'm saying this movie is similar to the world that we live in today? Let the freckles, you know, Sorry. Hello, pretty. What's it even mean to be pretty? Let's talk about fascistic beauty standards. In the book and the movie, pretties all look very similar. Big eyes, high cheekbones, small nose, large lips, perfectly sculpted. 
It really sounds like the Instagram face, doesn't it? However, once again, the book came out in 2005. The book also gets into the skin tone issue and how people typically get lightened. However, the movie just decides to skirt and completely around that. I mean, they do have a diverse hiring of their cast, which I think is a good thing. But uh, yeah, maybe avoiding the eugenic side of it is maybe a good idea considering the world that we're living in right now. But in my opinion, there's still a heavy eugenics angle even though it's manufactured through the book and movie. There's a clear distinction drawn between who you're meant to want to be like, obviously, it's going to be the pretties, who are civilized, they're beautiful. Nobody wants to be like the barbaric rusties who use fossil fuels and ruin the entire planet. And the city is a place where everything is free, nobody has to work, you just have to obey orders and you're basically having fun with your friends all the time. And that's the thing about it, it all seems so wonderful, however, it's really about control. But out of all of the dystopian fascistic states that have been created, uh, if I could actually just have one simple surgery and not deal with migraines with daily pain, not have money concerns every single day, uh, not feel incredibly weak, not have a bad heart, um, and never feel less than, whew. Yeah, sign me up, honestly, it sounds so good. Sure, you get lesions which cause brain damage, but I suffer from long COVID, so I struggle with d brain damage every day of my life. Uh, and honestly, ignorance is kind of bliss, so I can fully see why it's tempting to sign up for that because I struggle with pain every day. But no matter how good the propaganda is, we don't want to fall for a fascist state because it literally is just about hegemony. He he hegemony? Hegemony. Hegemony. <laughs> It's about compliance and flattening people into obedient drones. And you have this threat hanging over kids that if they misbehave, they're not going to be made pretty. They're going to remain ugly forever and they'll be outcasts. And humans are social creatures, as I've said multiple times. Nobody wants to be an outcast. And they base their ideas of beauty on the ideas of biology. At least that's how it's definitely sold far heavier in the book. And this indoctrination is much more prominent in the book. I wonder what else is leaned this way. Oh yeah, it's a great tactic that fascism uses all the time, where it attempts to stabilize the class system rather than eradicate it. Even though the city says it's making everyone equal, they're not, as there are controlling powers who are literally made to be smarter, stronger, and more powerful. As fascist aesthetics from 1940 to contemporary times by Anna M. Gellerman states, the need for good, true, and the holy is one of the most important ideologies of fascism because it adjoins godliness to human life. This birthed worship of the Aryan, which set an ideal skin tone, body physique, hair and eye color for which German people strived. Emphasis was placed on body physique because the idea that the human body indicates the structure of the mind. Moss argues that fascism would not have worked if not for the strictly defined aesthetic of beauty and power. It would be unacceptable to have an unclear and ambiguous statement such as multiple types of beauty. So, fascism devised the counter type of beauty, or the complete opposite of what fascist beauty ideals were. The two biggest counter types were the Jewish people or the black people. These groups were seen as of deformed body and mind. It's the same with the Uglies universe, with Rusters, aka us, now. We're the gross people of the past, as discussed much deeper in the book. We're sort of kind of like troglodytes, as jealous and backwards and wasteful. And Smokies are portrayed to be dangerous rebels who capture people and use them and want to destroy the city. It seems a bit too similar to the political messaging which is being used these days, right? I'm just seeing a few flags flying around right now. You could also make the argument that the children in Uglers are othered until they're 16 and manufactured to be quote perfect citizens, which changes the way they look and think, a way to ensure that the propaganda they're raised with sticks. The way that the specials look is this threatening beauty. They're manufactured to be more powerful and intimidating much like the genetically modified flower which is a chokehold on nature and is killing life everywhere. And this does get into tricky messaging here because I'm a fan of GM personally because we need to have everything that we can use to try and make sure that the planet can keep surviving and GM is uh, definitely one of those ways forward. We are pro-science on this channel obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be referencing scientific studies. There is a lot more to say about eugenics and fascism, but I'm not going to get into that today because I'm going to hold off on that until we get to my upcoming video about the crunchy to alt-right pipeline, which I'm still reading books on and gathering a lot of information on because I have a lot of thoughts on that and this video would be way too long. Ooh, let's get on to my final thoughts because you probably learnt quite a bit but then also feel quite hopeless right now. However, hope is not lost. It even gets addressed in one of the studies I referenced earlier. Diversifying your social media is genuinely a fantastic thing to do and that gets referred to in this study where self-compassion content has a positive impact on people's self-compassion. 
The glaringly obvious recommendation I can give to you is to have a look at your social media feed and unfollow the people who are using filters, who are using the editing technology. If you are someone that is actually struggling with low self-esteem because when you see this, it makes you feel bad. Because seriously, seeing people share their real normal skin really does help ground you back in reality. Like I've talked about this before, I don't use that sort of stuff because I personally don't want to go making people feel worse about themselves or making myself feel worse about it. Like I said, I've dealt with the BDD stuff and so I've just curated my feed personally. So hopefully this will help you too. Like I follow a number of amazing people from disability advocates to vegan activists to vegan recipe makers to people that are changing the world when it comes to their environmental activism to people with their body positivity accounts to like genuinely just people doing all sorts of work all over the place. I'll link a few of them for you down below. Social media is ruining young people's lives gets talked about a lot but I think it's more because people are actually just better informed these days because we're actually sharing what's really going on in the world which I personally think is a good thing. But as I've talked about with a number of you on Instagram, uh, it's also important to make sure that you have that healing time away and that you're not just following all doom and gloom because it gets forgotten about a lot that when you're trying to make positive change, you're constantly coming up against all of these horrible barriers, especially the more you learn about the world, the more bleak it can seem. And so it's really important to celebrate small wins to actually, well leads into my next point, get involved in your local community because trust me, so much good grass work, work is actually happening around you that you may not even know about. Now it's to each person's different ability and this is something that which I talk about all the time. Like some of us can't do a lot of physical stuff and that's okay so we can do our work in different ways. Some people are amazing artists, you may be really smart when it comes to plants or have fantastic flora and fauna knowledge in your area. There are so many different things that you can actually do to be involved which makes a really big impact on a small scale and if you are one of the people that have a larger social media platform you can use that for positive things too. There are many different ways that all of us can do a positive impact and none of that actually reflects on the way that people look because trust me when you're actually working with people that are trying to make the world a better place the last thing that people actually care about is how you look. But seriously, the more that we get involved with building each other up and making the world a better place through the various skills that we all individually have, the less the insecurities that we're given actually matter as they have less power over us. Where you can see the impact that you're making rather than creating scars on your body because you don't feel good enough, you don't feel worthy. Trust me, as someone that's absolutely been there, like I said, I had my surgeries nearly a decade ago now. And uh, you'll definitely be able to tell from the videos which I have made over the past years, um, my journey because I've been sort of sharing this stuff with you to hopefully help other people out because hey I haven't had to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars in therapy to not share some of that good stuff too. You probably need something lighter after this video so if you haven't seen it yet go watch my Gilmore Girls video because I had so much fun making that and I do have some spicy takes in that video. <laughs> And if you don't know what else to say but you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much because that makes a huge difference when it comes to YouTube and recommending my videos to other people. Um, if you could leave the gloves emoji because if you've read the book or watched the movie, you know uh, what a big impact the gloves actually have. <laughs> And also I know that it's dystopia, but the technology to be able to change your eye color to be anything that you want, because often people choose gold. What color would you choose? Because for me, I would want mauve eyes. And I'm not on about like this weird fake mauve that people seem to think is like the puce color that you think it is. I'm on about genuine mauve and with pink and silver flecks, because I think that would be so cool. And yes, I know that witches have purple eyes and... <laughs> I would be okay with that. If the movie intrigued you even just a little bit, I highly recommend reading the book instead by Scott Westerfeld. Yes, it's a YA novel, like the audiobook was like 10 and a half hours long or something. For me, it's definitely been much lighter reading than the reading which I have been doing, which is what I'm showing on the screen right now. And I'm about to start reading the Conspirituality book, ready for that crunchy to alt-right pipeline video, which I'm working on. So you can see, I typically read very heavy things. <laughs> They're very important and informative, but a lot more like brain uh, thinky stuff as opposed to a YA novel which deals with dystopia. Huh. 
And thanks again to my patrons for continuing to support me, especially to my Trash Panda enablers. Birgit, Brian Homstead, Kerry Quake, Laura, Mila Gautier, Stella Sapiente, Tammy Poitres, Tim Long, Tonya Banier, Trail Mix 305, and Zachary Ellaloof. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I may see you next week. I may not. Um, honestly, you can probably tell I've been pumping out a lot of videos, and uh, I'm not doing too good, so maybe you'll have to wait two weeks for a video. How about that? I give myself a couple of weeks, maybe. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. There's probably going to be something else I want to talk about because I love to yap. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Bye!